Hey, how's it going everybody? Sinful Duck here, and welcome to our first episode of Grim Dawn. So, uh, this episode, I'll, I'll briefly go through my build real quick, just to show you guys a little bit of what I'm running, and then I am just gonna jump into some gameplay, have a little fun, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy, and let me know down in the comments below if you want to see more Grim Dawn content, if you're looking for some, uh, some build update kind of videos or uh, just some entertaining gameplay so yeah let me know down below and let's go ahead and jump into this okay so the first thing I'm gonna start off with here is I'm gonna show you guys my skills uh, you can see here I am running Arcanist and Necromancer which is the spellbinder so I'm level 50 spellbinder and uh, this is kind of what I'm running here so from the Arcanist tree I'm not using a whole lot um, I've got Iskandra's Elemental Exchange because it's great for your energy uh, energy management. Which energy, for those of you coming from the ESO world, that's like your Magicka or your Mana. Your, it, but it's the green bar here. <laughs> it's what you use to cast your abilities. So this is really good for energy management. Uh, Elixir's Flash Freeze. This is like a Frost Nova skill. Uh, I just got one point in that just as like a you know get people off of me you know if anyone gets too close pop that kind of save myself there uh, but then across the bottom here inner focus I've only got one point at the moment because that gives you spirit and offensive ability I will end up getting more of this I just haven't done that yet arcane will this is a very good skill uh, once you reach 70% health you're gonna get a big boost to your damage and your energy regen so as you stack that up, you can see that the uh, the damage and the energy regen just goes way up. So that's going to be really good down the line. Uh, it's not too useful now because I honestly I don't drop that low too often. Mental alacrity. So this is a really big one for me from the Arcanist tree. Um, this gives you casting speed, but more importantly, it reduces your skill cost so it's a, it's a cost reduction ability and for the the build that I'm running this is essential this is amazing because the build I'm running is very very energy hungry so what type of build am I running I am actually running a necromancer drain essence build you don't really see this on on YouTube at all most people who run a necromancer are running are running a pet build or a melee build with bone harvest but I'm running something different I'm going with drain essence uh, basically what this is is you stand and channel it hits enemies and it does damage and drains their health so it heals you does damage to them now right off the bat it's a single target ability but it does a lot of damage and you can see it's every 0.3 seconds that it ticks so you're getting the uh, you can see the 1397 aether damage every 0.3 seconds and vitality decay damage which is basically just a dot over two seconds so really really cool and then it converts 10% of all of that I'm sorry 10% of the aether damage it converts to health now it is single target right off the bat so you do have to pair it with Hungering Reach. And you can see here, Hungering Reach right now, 20% chance of affecting up to three targets. Now, I'll show you some some gear that I'm using here in just a second that actually boosts this even more, because I think, is it on here? It doesn't actually, sh oh, there it is, okay. So 30%, you can see up there, uh, it's the third line there, 30% chance of affecting up to five targets. So, Hungry Reach is giving us 20% for 3, but because of an item, we're getting 30% chance to hit 5. And you get that drain health on every target you hit, so it's amazing. I also have Aether Fire bound to it, which is one of our devotions that we'll get into here in a second. Um, Aether Fire, 15% chance on attack that it will drop basically a small little AoE 
thing on the ground. It's, it's a pool of green fire that it puts on the ground, and any enemies that are in it get hit hard. Really hard. So that's a really cool skill. Uh, I'm also starting to put points here into decomposition just to boost up a little more damage. You get uh, higher vitality decay, which is nice, but uh, this one's good, but it's not essential. It's just a little something extra to boost some uh, some damage. I also have uh, Siphon Souls. This is like my up-close AoE life-stealing... Uh, it's, it's amazing. It hits... It's AoE, it hits really hard, has a very good radius, and you can see it says uh, 9 second duration, and it does 2375 Aether damage. Now, it does the 2375 Aether damage when you cast it, and then over the 9 seconds, it continues to tick. Like every second, just 2375, 2375. Tw so, I mean, this is hitting so hard. And because... We're getting uh, Aether damage from our Drain Essence is how we're healing. Uh, this off the bat does uh, Vitality damage, but we've converted, you can see here, 100% Vitality damage converted to Aether damage. So we get a lot more damage and we only have to stack one damage type on our gear, which is awesome. Uh, I'm running Harbinger of Souls. It's just another damage boost there. Uh, increases your aether damage, vitality, decay damage, uh, the 5% attack damage converted to health doesn't actually do anything for the skills that we're using. Um, we don't have physical damage so that can't be converted but we do have casting speed that affects what we're doing so we get casting speed, we get vitality damage uh, and vitality decay damage so very cool with that one. Uh, just starting to put points here into uh, Reap Spirit, which, I mean, you guys can see that damage number. You get 50% of your main hand weapon damage, plus that huge amount of Aether damage, plus Vitality Decay, and a pet that comes out. It's insane, which actually, I'm going to put another point into it there. Basically, the idea behind this build is just stand back. Drain Essence, if somebody gets close, then we're going to freeze them, and then we're going to hit them with uh, Siphon Souls. If there's any big targets, we're going to hit them with Reap Spirit as well. So, yeah, so there's that. And then uh, Spectral Binding is kind of a defensive buff. So it does give us some Aether, <laughs> excuse me, some Aether damage, which is nice, but you get a ton of health from it. So uh, we're using Spectral Binding along with Spectral Wrath. So this is an AoE. Anybody that hits you, um, they're going to get debuffed. They're going to take some damage and they're going to get debuffed. So 22% Aether Resistance they're going to lose and Vitality Resistance, which helps. Both of those help with our Drain Essence. And like I said, it's AoE. So if there's a group of guys and one of them hits me, they're all going to get the debuff so very cool but let's jump into the gear here real quick and I'll just show you what I have I don't have the greatest gear I'm just gonna tell you guys that right off the bat don't have the greatest gear but I'll show you what is actually important for this kind of build so right off the bat I'm gonna show you my boots because the boots I think are really cool 100% uh, chance when hit that the enemy's gonna get feared so you're not gonna stand there and just get beat on endlessly uh, every time they hit you, they're going to run away for five seconds, so very, very cool. Uh, it also gives us a nice chunk of Aether damage, but what I really love about this is that you're getting some movement speed and plus two to Drain Essence, so your items can, can boost your skills. So we're getting plus two to Drain Essence there. Th this is kind of the only item that you have to have to do this build, which is the shield, the Spectral War Shield. They're very, very easy to get. They come from anywhere that you kill ghosts, you'll find a bunch of these. So uh, basically what this does is it's going to give you a little bit of resist. Obviously it's a shield, so you get a nice chunk of armor out of it. But the biggest thing is down toward the bottom of the shield section here, you can see plus two to drain essence. 
That's amazing. So we're already at plus four on our Drain Essence, which is really making it powerful. Then you get plus two meter target area to Drain Essence, so you get a little bit of range for it. But the biggest things are these bottom two. 10% chance of affecting up to two targets with Drain Essence. That's how we're getting the 30% chance to hit five targets, is because this is additive with the, uh, the skill passive. So that is amazing. Two more targets, an extra 10% chance to hit all of them. It's, it's, uh, it's too good not to have. And then the big thing, because like I said, this is a very energy hungry build, minus 8% skill energy cost for Drain Essence. Amazing. So when you stack that 8% energy cost with our Arcanist here doing 14% at the moment, plus from this, uh, we're getting energy regen percentage and energy leech so so strong so yeah that's all I'm gonna get into with the build here I take that back let let's take a quick look at devotions just to show you what I have um, starting off we have the imp because aether fire I think especially with this kind of a build aether fire is amazing absolutely amazing and you guys will see that in action here in a second but Aether Fire, awesome. I also have the Widow. Now, Widow gives you Arcane Bomb, which it's a good skill. I don't think it's as good as Aether Fire, but it's okay. Uh, I could honestly do without Arcane Bomb, but for right now I have it set to, uh, I have it attached to Siphon Souls. Uh, but the biggest reason why I take the Widow is because you get 50% Aether damage, 30% Aether damage, and another 40% Aether damage. You get a huge amount of damage from that one tree, so that's why I went with the Widow. Arcane Bomb is just kind of a cool bonus. Um, I wish I could attach it to something different, but unfortunately I cannot. So uh, I've got to attach to Siphon Souls because it'll, you know, it's an AOE. It continues ticking, so uh, it does work, but not my favorite. So down here, I also went with the Hawk. Uh, that was just to get some more, uh, some more green affinity. But it does give you some nice bonuses. You get some offense ability, some crit damage. Uh, more offense ability, so it, it's it's useful. I do like the Hawk. If you need some green, go for that. So what I ended up doing was I started off with the Imp. Uh, then I moved my point down here so I could open up the Hawk. Used the Hawk to get my greens and then went back up for the Widow. Uh, after that, I went with the Owl because I needed some purples. So uh, the Owl doesn't really give you a whole lot that's useful. For this build you really don't you get some defensive ability there this one is what I like you get 8% elemental resist which is good elemental resist gives you all three elements so fire frost and shock so 8% to all three and then 5% skill energy cost so 5% cost reduction which stacks with all of our other cost reduction so very very strong there and it gave us the purple that we need for the one I'm going after at the moment which is Chariot of the Dead. So Chariot of the Dead has some really good uh, some really good passives in here. So you get physique, offensive ability, you get more health, vitality resists, offensive ability, more offensive ability. You get a lot of offensive ability from this. But the skill at the end, very cool, I think. Uh, I haven't I haven't used it yet. I don't have it unlocked. I need two more devotions to get it. A 30 second recharge, right? So 20% chance whenever I get hit that this will proc. It's going to give me a pretty nice heal. So you get 350 health plus 3% of your total health. So pretty nice. You get some defense ability when it procs. Uh, it says 7 second duration. I think that's just for the defensive ability, but 
we'll have to test that out when we get it, but I think this is going to be pretty useful. All right. That's enough talking. Let's get to some uh, some fighting. Ha ha ha. Look at that. Look at that. Can't do anything. What the heck? What's going on there? There we go. So, yeah, nothing that I want on the ground. Whew. You can see kind of just how strong this drain essence is. Look at it, man. It's so good. You just stand and channel and they fall over. At the moment, these guys, I guess they're the same level as me now, but all these green, little green pools on the ground, that's my aether fire that's dropping. Look at me standing in their fire. Excellent. Alright, oh! I have a quest objective over there. <clears throat> that Aether Fire. You guys will see when I get into uh, a little bit larger battle. That Aether Fire just goes nuts. A badge of protection. I'll grab it, but I don't need it. Here we go. Look at it. It's awesome, man. As they hit me, they just run away in fear. Really helps mitigate damage there. Really helps mitigate damage. Whoa. You can use that Aether Fire here for little choke points. So strong. They're all dead back here. I haven't even entered the room and they were already dead. Oh, it's so good. Oh man, okay, so we gotta go this way. Aether fire. Oh, they snared me. Jerks. Yeah, look at all the Aether fire. Look at it all, it's everywhere. We got out of here, nothing special, so let's just move on. Next level. I'm going to place a portal here because I think we're about to fight a boss. Oh yeah. Oh jeez. Oh, move out of the fire. No, boss down. Got him. Sit down, boss. All right, he was for a quest too. So you guys love to let me know down below. Uh, would you guys like to see a playthrough of this game? So I'm getting really close to beating this on uh, the veteran difficulty right now, which basically it's it's normal. It's hard to explain, but it's the normal difficulty set to hard, if that makes any sense. Uh, but this works just like Diablo, where you play through on the first time on normal, and then once you beat it, you start it over again at a higher difficulty level. So if you guys want to see a playthrough on the next difficulty, let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll record my whole playthrough on that and uh, let you guys check it out. So... Yeah, let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing 
Alright, well, I think that's going to wrap up this video here. So you guys got to check out a little bit of Grim Dawn. Uh, showed you a little bit of the build and a little bit of gameplay action. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Give this a thumbs up if you did. Leave a comment, like I said. Let me know if you want to see that playthrough. Uh, as well as some, uh, some other builds that I have and some build updates for this guy. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Subscribe for more. And until next time, guys, take it easy.